Greetings Captains and welcome to the first lesson in the Flight Sim School video tutorial series. My name is Thomas Rasmussen and to help me I have Flight Instructor Cameron aka Voidhawk9 from the explain.org forums. This lesson will introduce the basic controls of the aircraft and their use. For many of you these will be well known but for others they may be yet unfamiliar. A proper understanding and how best to use them is essential to the proper and precise control of our aircraft that will be required for the lessons to come. On the screen you can see a view of the cockpit as well as an exterior view of the aircraft. Here we have the elevator. This control will cause the aircraft to pitch up when the yoke is pulled back or pitch down when the yoke is pushed forward. This allows the aircraft to climb or descend. Here we have the ailerons. These controls cause the aircraft to roll left when the yoke is turned left or roll right when the yoke is turned right. We have the rudder. Use of the rudder will cause the aircraft to yaw or skid left when the left rudder pedal is pushed forward or right when the right rudder pedal is pushed forward. The rudder controls are usually also used for steering on the ground. To be able to control these things in the sim it's important to assign access to a yoke or a joystick as well as a pair of rudder pedals unless you are using a joystick with a twist grip. If you are simply using the mouse for your control then X-Plane will automatically input some rudder for you when you use the ailerons. For full control of the aircraft however you need at least a joystick with a twist grip. Going on with the throttle, which controls the engine power to increase or decrease airspeed. You can increase the throttle by pushing it in and decrease it again by pulling it back. As you can see on the tachometer, increasing the throttle will increase the revolutions per minute, whereas decreasing the throttle will decrease the RPMs again. The easiest way to control it is by assigning the throttle control to an axis on a throttle quadrant but you can also control it by clicking and dragging it with the mouse or by using an assigned key on the keyboard. This is a fuel mixture control. Here we have the elevator trim control. It's used to move the elevator to a new constant position if for example you have to constantly hold the yoke in a deflected position to keep the aircraft flying straight. We can trim nose up and nose down in practice, if you find yourself having to constantly pull the yoke a bit to stop the aircraft from diving down towards the ground, you would want to trim nose up in order to move the elevator to a new position that will allow the release of the constant pull in the yoke while at the same time making the aircraft fly straight. Preferably, you can configure trim controls to buttons on a yoke. Alternatively, you can configure the controls to keyboard buttons. In some aircraft, you can also trim the ailerons and rudder, even though not all real aircraft are equipped with these controls. Here we have the flaps control. The flaps increases drag on the aircraft while at the same time increasing lift on the wings. This is particularly useful during approach and landing where flaps permits lower airspeeds without causing the aircraft to stall. Let's now see how it all works in practice. Ok folks, let's first set up a training situation. First select the Cessna 172 and be sure to load it with engines running. Select a location without too many mountains. I've chosen Charlie Yankee Tango Zulu. Toronto City Airport. Set up the weather to clear so that you don't have too much wind and turbulence. Obviously, for most lessons we want to fly during daylight, so I've set the time to around noon. We'll learn how to take off later once we're familiar with the various controls, but for now we'll cheat a bit and start ourselves in the air. Now pause the sim by pressing P on the keyboard, go into the map by pressing M Click on your aircraft and select an altitude of 3000 feet. And an airspeed of 100 knots. Of 
unpause the sim and push the throttle in a bit so you won't lose speed. I'm just going to get the aircraft balance before we start. Now that we have found our balance, let's try out the controls. First, gently use the elevator to pitch the aircraft up and down. Let's try that again. Notice that the altitude increases and the airspeed decreases. And down. Notice here that the altitude decreases while the airspeed increases. If we move the controls too quickly we may stall the aircraft and send it momentarily out of control. The key to good accurate control of the aircraft is to be smooth and gentle. Let's use the ailerons. Smoothly roll to the left by moving your joystick to the left or by turning your yoke counterclockwise. Now smoothly roll to the right. If we turn quickly, the aircraft will briefly skid in the opposite direction. This is known as adverse yaw, and we need a little rudder to counter this. More on this later. Let's also try that to the right. Okay, let's try to fly straight again and then try out the rudder. If you're flying with just a mouse, then this will not apply. First, rudder left. The aircraft will skid sideways in the direction of the input. You'll notice that you need to use the ailerons if you want to keep the wings level while using the rudder. Let's try that again with right rudder. Again, we need to use the ailerons to the opposite direction if we want to keep our wings level. Now, let's see what happens if we don't counter the rolling effect of the rudder. You'll see the aircraft skids sideways in the direction of the input, then start rolling and then finally starts to drop the nose towards the ground. The rudder is used primarily to balance the aircraft and not as a primary means of changing direction. Let's try again to the right. Let's go back briefly to adverse yaw. To counter this, whenever you roll the aircraft, use a bit of rudder in the same direction until you return the aileron control to neutral. If you use a lot of aileron, you will need more rudder. Throttle control is quite simple in this type of aircraft. Move it forward to increase power and move it back to decrease it. Setting the throttle to the RPM you want is ideally done in two steps. First adjust the throttle until the engine sounds about right. If you want full power it will be noisier. If you are reducing power to descend it will be quieter. To set cruise power it should be quite noisy but not as much as full power. Second, glance at the RPM gauge and make small adjustments as needed to get the precise RPM you want. The longer you use the technique, the fewer small adjustments you will find you need. Realize that in an aircraft like this, with a simple fixed pitch propeller, the RPM will increase and decrease if airspeed increases or decreases. Using the trim at this point will make things a bit easier. More than likely, you're having to use the controls to keep your aircraft flying where you want it to. If you're needing to hold back on the controls, then trim up until you can centralize the controls and the aircraft flies level. You may need to tweak the trim a couple of times to get it just right. If you're having to hold the nose down, then trim down. If you wish to practice, intentionally put the aircraft out of trim by moving the trim well away from what is needed to fly hands off and level, then set it back to the correct position again.
Let's try that again by trimming nose down. And then try to trim it back again. You can repeat this as many times you want until you get it figured. Anytime you change the speed or configuration like flaps or throttle setting of the aircraft, the trim will need to be adjusted. You should now understand the basic controls of the aircraft and be able to control and trim it as required. In the next lesson we will learn how to fly precisely straight and level. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If so, please remember to share, like and subscribe. From Cameron and I, thank you so much for watching and see you very soon.